Hi there, hope you're well. In this week's video we're going to be building a small cabinet with drawers or drawer boxes to go under the router bench that I made last week. So yes, carrying on from last week's epic router bench build, which is doing great and standing here on its temporary leg. It's going to have a cabinet in here with some drawers in. I want the drawers to be completely removable because I'll have router bits and collets and all the other gubbins that's associated with a router bench, router table like this. And by and large, the actual size is predetermined. I can't take it any wider than the cutout in the bench here, which is about 450 mil. I don't want it any you know, to go all the way back to the wall because I want the option to be able to stash some longer stuff behind it. It's also about 450, and the height's already determined as well by about 650 mil. So you know, there's there's only so much you can. Do in terms of the design with those uh, within those limitations. Uh, you're joining me partway through the build as always. I've got a dark grey coloured MDF, same as the bench top for the cabinet, and I'm going to be using birch ply for the drawer boxes and the drawer runners. I've already cut the grey MDF out, and I'm just cutting 18mm square sections for the drawer slides, the drawer runners now, much as I did with the previous plywood workshop boxes. I've cut the MDF to size and I'm just marking the face side and edge with tape because I can't find my white pencil anywhere. So this is the kind of where the cabinet's going to work out on its side, obviously sides, top and base. Uh, we'll have a plywood runner just as we had in the uh, birch bike boxes at the end there. I'm going to have one oops, so that it faces out with the nice stripy bits of birch ply. I think we'll get four drawers in there and where they are is a little bit arbitrary. Um, make them bigger at the bottom, smaller at the top maybe. But I think the, the easiest way to work these out is just going to be to measure them out against the router bits that I've got that I want to use. So this is the kind of thing that we've got here. Uh, just the base, uh, excuse me, just the side. I'm uh, just going to run some, run some tape down it so we can see the markings a bit more clearly. I've marked where the top and base come to, then I'm using my router bits to set the height of the drawers, adding a little bit in here and there to make up the round numbers, for the most part anyway. And then I'm cutting some spaces from scrap MDF to those sizes. So the cabinet's all sort of marked up. Um, I'm going to join this together with dominoes for the loose tenons, but I'm not going to use my Festool domino. I'm going to give you a little preview of the 10 minute workshop loose tenon jig. Um, this has been coming for a long time. It's been a ro rocky road, a lumpy journey in many ways, but we are getting there. This is pretty close to the final, final production sample, if you like. This is out in the hands of a, of a few people whose opinion I value. And we're getting some good feedback on this. I'll just give you a quick, a quick demo of this one. Uh, again, just like with a Festool Domino, there's no need to do any marking. Uh, the only mark that I've had to make is for the center of the panel. And uh, we can use little, little reference pins that reference off the edge, just as you would with a, a regular Domino. It's also just like the loose tenon jig that I featured earlier on in the year. It's the only um, jig that I'm aware of that lets you do a, a sort of a mid-sized looser slot for the faces and a narrow tight slot for the edges of the board. So uh, let's see if it all works out. So nice and flush in there against the uh, against the reference pin. We just pop a clamp on that and a little spring clamp on that. I'm using Trend's little uh, cordless T18 router for this. Dust collection isn't the best on this, I've got to say. Um, so I will need just to hoover things out a little bit afterwards. Oh. 
So they were just with the reference pins off the edge. Now we can just align the scribe line against our pencil mark here. Line it up. Clamp him down. It's the same process on the edge of the board, just using the narrow slot. Okay, that's all that being said. Quick moment of truth. This is the top. It's the left hand, so that should just fit into there. Assuming it works, we'll do a, just do a dry fit for now. Nice snug fit on these five by thirty loose tenons, official festival ones for Domino. This goes in there, and again because we've got a, a tight fitting slot and a slightly loose one, you've got a little bit of wiggle room on there as well, just to settle that into position. But that's actually. Pretty nice fit and finish right there. Very happy with that. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll fit the base onto this and get the runners in, get those glued up, and then we can give everything a coat of wax. And while that glues up, I can be getting on with the draw boxes. Yeah. I am perfectly happy with that. With the top and base in place I can use the spacers to set the position of the runners and fix them down with nails and glue. With both sides done I can give each a good sanding and then apply a coat of wax to the inside faces leaving the parts that will have glue applied as clear as possible. With the wax applied but not buffed yet, I can get the carcass glued out with regular 5x30mm dominoes and a fast grab PVA. Couldn't do that with a tensor fitting. Sometime later and out of the clamps I can buff up the inside faces and runners. There's no back to the cabinet so I've cut a couple of vertebral strips of MDF to act as stops for the drawers and I'm marking the position of the runners on these, adding some glue to the edges, 
and nailing them through. Onto the front rails now, and these are just glued onto the edge of the cabinet and the end of the runners, and then nailed through. A quick cut of wax on the carcass edges and the front rail, then it can be put aside so I can get on with the drawer boxes. I've cut a half sheet of 12mm birch ply to the length of the drawer sides and back, and I'm using the spacers to cut waist side strips off this, as this will make them a couple of millimetres less than the actual drawer openings. With all the strips complete I've cut a template from some scrap to make a nice snug fit in the carcass, and once checked I can cut this to length as my definitive guide. All measurements are now taken off this guide using an appropriate packer against the flagstop, 12mm here, to set the cut, and cutting all sizes of the drawer at once on the MFT. Draw bases next, still in 12mm birch. And then onto the draw fronts that are in 18mm birch. And again, I'm using the spacers to set the size. These are cut from a single sheet, so the grain continues down through the cabinet front. And with the fronts laid out, I can mark a centre on each one. And mark the handle cutout. This is as much to remind me which is the face side, to be honest, as I'm cutting a 12mm rebate into the inside faces of the fronts, first hogging out the waist with tracks or trenching cuts, and finishing off with a single pass against a rebating bit in the router bench, which is working very nicely, thanks for asking. So, just <laughs> discovered a bit of a mistake. Uh, I taped, did a dry fit on the drawer box, just taped together the way it would go. It's all looking pretty good. It's all fitting really nicely. Not quite your piston fit, but pretty close. It's all really nice, apart from one small thing. <laughs> Made it 6mm too short. Uh, what I've done, I'm done, I need to do the handle cut out here. When I was doing, working out the lengths for the sides, I took into account the rebate that's cut away, not the rebate that's left. I've made them 12 mil shorter, not six. Which is really silly, schoolboy error. Uh, but there we are. Uh, no, I'm not gonna <laughs> remake the, the draw sides, because uh, they're just yeah, workshop boxes. I'll just put a little packer, probably just some, you know, the gray uh, MDF just in the back there. Uh, trim it down to 6mm or whatever it needs to be to make that uh, stop doing that basically. <laughs> there we are. Just to prove the simplest of things can catch you out. But other than that, really pleased with them. Got to get on with it because it's dragging on a bit. So 
I'll get those done, get these draw handles cut out, and then we can get them everything nailed together. And we cut all wax on it then, fingers crossed, get it done. So with the handles cut out and cleaned up, it's onto the drawer assembly, all with nails and glue. Starting with the back. Then the sides. And then the front. I'm really pleased with how well the front rebates have come out and they're a lovely fit with a bead of glue applied around the rebate. They can be pinned on through the sides and base, leaving the fronts completely clear. With a glue dry, the drawers can be sanded back and a coat of wax applied. And while the wax soaks in, I can get the cabinet back in to fit those little packers to the back stops, again just glued and pinned in place. Because of my uneven floor I'm using adjustable kitchen cabinet style legs but they need cutting down a bit first and then screwing onto the base. And yes, I know the housing should extend over the cabinet sides for support but I'm fitting a plinth later and they'd get in the way. The feet simply screw into the housings and with a bench jacked up with a spreader I can get the cabinet in leveled up and screwed down. Well there we are, I think that's uh, looking pretty nice. Obviously not completely finished yet, I need to make some inserts in there for the uh, router bits to sit in but I'm going to call this one done for today, it's gone on long enough, bit of a long one. Again, uh, obviously a bit to do making the cabinet as well, giving you a little teaser of the uh, loose tenon jig and then getting the drawers made and the boxes and everything together. It's all come out really nicely, really really pleased with it. Um, I think the colours work really well between the, the grey uh, MDF and the and the birch ply. I was going to put a, a, a little plinth down here at the bottom just to cover the gap there because you know you know things are going <laughs> to get under there. But I think I might oops, I think I might try a bit of birch ply instead. Might sit it off quite nicely. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do. But uh, yes, a good good build. Uh, always something new to learn. Always another mistake to make. Uh, but it's how you get around them. <laughs>
the counts and learning to hide them uh, is the most important thing I think uh, but I'll call this one done for today thank you very much indeed for taking a look thank you as always to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members whose continued support really does help me to keep things ticking along here uh, but that's it for this one thank you ever so much and I'll see you in the next one all right take care